advantage. I think that you're going to find uh, plays out there pretty quickly. And the guys who figure out the business model quicker than the other ones, then will we'll definitely win. But there's some risk involved in that business just because of the number of new entrants. But So that was basically the context that he gave me. Um, the nice thing about Ed is that he, he ran inside Dyson. He ran an entire business unit. So he ran our, our hand dryer business, uh, our air dryer business. And that was, I'm going to say, probably somewhere in the region. I'm taking the numbers off the top of my head here. But it's probably a $150 million to $200 million business, but extremely profitable. Uh, and, and a B2, a B2B sale for the best part. But he extracted a lot of the technology from the core Dyson operations and then embedded that into his products. And then obviously, um, it took those to market in, in different channels, be that the B2, mainly the B2B market and in the likes of washrooms, stadiums, hotels, um, shopping malls and so on. So mm-hmm. he kind of ran a, a P&L pretty much separately from the rest of the business. How, how close would he have got to sort of manufacturing, for example, running that P&L? Yeah, pretty, pretty much because before that, he actually used to run all the what we called IBD, which is all the international businesses. Um, and that was a, a basically a conglomerate, I'm going to say, of something like 10 or 15 different countries. So a lot of the regulatory requirements, uh, and this was for the whole the whole company, so at that point in time, it was vacuum cleaners and purifiers and so on that he was, he was having to take care of. And so there was a high touch point. I started Dyson as the chief operating officer back in 2012 or so. Uh, and Ed and I connected a lot in my old role of the COO role because he was saying, hey, listen, I've got this big opportunity to sell you know, X amount of vacuum cleaners or, or uh, purifiers and so on. But I need the, the regulatory requirements for the likes of the United Arab Emirates or Turkey or, you know, India, the, the kind of emerging markets. And we would run the business cases together and I'd say, okay, fair enough, that's going to be a special run for us on the manufacturing side. So we're going to have to increase the price on that in order to keep the margin structure properly. Can you go back and get that price? So I had quite a close working relationship with, with Ed that stemmed from the manufacturing, you know, batch, basically batch production for his IPD business. And then obviously when he took over the US, um, we were doing very, very specific SKUs for some of the big box customers. So when he was running um, Americas for Dyson, we were, we were under attack by Shark uh, and Bissell and to some extent Hoover. And they were coming in on the back of the Dyson success and saying, you know, the same suction as a Dyson, half the price. So it was a bit of a price war. Mm. Um, and Ed came up with a strategy which was like, let's go straight and give exclusives to, cus- to specific cu- customers. 